Hi everyone. Now we are moving to new subtopic that is vertical alignment, which there is a value of G gradient, either uphill or downhill. If the gradient is uphill, the sign for the gradient is positive and for downhill is negative. So let us look into the overview. It is actually a straight line connected by vertical curve with the objective to give a gradual change from one tangent grade to another without neglecting the driver comfort. It is not on the horizontal path but it has a height. The tangent is going upward to avoid harms and to provide safe side distance for vehicles to stop and maneuver. This curve usually parabolic in shape. This is an example of vertical alignment or vertical curve where you climb the hill then going down. Same goes to this one. It is really clear that from the flat surface, horizontal path, then going upward. So we need the vertical alignment to avoid harm at the peak of the curve or at the summit of the curve. And this is also another example of vertical alignment. This picture is from San Francisco. Can you see here? This is the Golden Gate Bridge. So San Francisco is uh, very familiar with this rolling terrain which their topography is up and down. What will happen if the designer or highway engineer design improper vertical alignment? So it may cause pavement defect cracks. Because the road was not designed or was not meant for this long limousine but then Look at this picture, that is good. It's hanging in the middle because of the uh, summit is quite sharp. Same goes to this one. Huh? Okay, so um, yeah, because the road is not designed for them. The road was not designed for this long vehicle. Normally, if lorries or buses, they are uh, slightly higher than this car because the tire and uh, the lower part of the limousine is quite low. Okay, let us look into uh, the main component of vertical alignment. Basically, it has two main components. First is uphill and downhill slope, which we call it as gradient, G. A good design of slope or gradient is when a vehicle can be controlled well in the condition of high gear for uphill slope and without having to brake for downhill slope. That is a very good design of vertical curve. But normally, we will try to change gear when we going uphill. Okay, this is only for a uh, manual car. Uh, masa belajar lesson memandu dulu Kan kalau kita naik bukit We change to gear 1, gear 2 kan We try to change our gear So that we can travel smoothly On the vertical alignment Okay uh, Vehicle performance Especially heavy good vehicles Depends on the slope condition And the length Okay The longer the slope The lower the performance of these heavy good vehicles which it can slower their movement because they are very heavy. Heavy good vehicle speed will be affected if the uphill gradient is too slow and long. Lama, it's too long to climb. Kesian orang. And the most important thing, we have to determine the critical slope length, which is the maximum length of uphill slope that heavy good vehicles can go through without losing much speed. So that is the first component. How we design the uphill and downhill slope. How long, how steep. Second component is summit curve. 
the peak of the curve. Lengkung puncak. So, the main criteria for this summit curve, you have to provide a minimum stopping side distance. This is not slipping, yeah? So, stopping side distance. It must have adequate drainage. Comfortable in operations. And also, the curve must have pleasant appearance. There are two types of vertical alignment, which the first is crest vertical curve. The crest vertical curve will start with positive gradient, positive G1, uphill. This is the summit curve. And end with negative gradient negative g so it will going up and going down and this is the length of the critical length this is the external angle so how to get the value of the external angle i will show you later so for this crest vertical curve it is uphill slope meeting the downhill slope the second types of vertical alignment is set vertical curve which the downhill slope meeting the uphill slope so the downhill slope is negative g and the uphill slope is positive g and the length of the vertical alignment is l which we call as critical slope length for the vertical alignment. I will explain further about vertical alignment. The vertical alignment of a highway or road consists of straight section known as tangent connected by vertical curve. In for horizontal alignment, there is no slope involved in the design. But the most important criteria for the vertical alignment is the selection of suitable grades for the tangent section and the appropriate length of the vertical curve, which we call as critical slope length. We can't design the slope too steep or too long because it will significantly affect the performance of heavy goods vehicles. Nevertheless, the topography of the area through which the road traverses has a very significant impact on the design of the vertical alignment. Let's say you want to build a road that connected from Kuala Lumpur to Genting Highland or Cameron Highland, that is the most simple one. We can't say that we want to eliminate the vertical alignment. No, we can't. As I mentioned earlier, uh, there are two types of vertical alignment so the first one is crest crest vertical alignment is any uphill slope meeting downhill slope so this is vertical alignment the positive gradient showing uphill and negative for downhill you can label as g1 and g2 g1 for uphill g2 for downhill we also can connect between positive and positive to form a vertical alignment. Positive G1 and positive G2. This is slope is connecting positive and positive. Or most probably, you also can connect between positive and flat. So, positive G1 and 0. Because for these types of road, also we need to form the vertical alignment. But in our syllabus, we only will consider the first types of vertical press. And the second types of vertical alignment is sagging. Sagging, which we connect between negative gradient and positive gradient to form the sagging. So negative gradient 
normally for the downhill we label as 2 positive as 1 same goes to the second part we also can connect negative and negative to form the vertical alignment negative g2 negative g1 it's up to you we, we also can use as this the first one as g1 the second one as g2 doesn't matter as long as you understand which connect which we also can connect between negative and flat in order to form the vertical alignment so negative g you can use g1 as well no problem but as i mentioned earlier for this course we only consider the first types of vertical alignment but where is the critical slope length so the critical slope length is from here to here from the beginning of the slope which is here it start to climb to here okay so how to imagine eh bukan ke dari sini tadi dah naik ah macam tu no 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 this is to simplify actually i will show you more clear okay dia macam ni you can have a clearer view like this okay imagine this is on the flat terrain so the gradient equal to zero and let's say there is a mountain here so there is two tangent this is the first tangent and there is another one tangent here so we have to form a vertical alignment so how to form the vertical alignment you have to sketch or design like this this is the types of sagging vertical curve sagging yeah um, and you also need to design a vertical alignment in here and also another one here so at this particular example it has three types of vertical alignment the first one is sagging this is crest and this is sagging without the vertical alignment the road will look like this flat then suddenly abrupt change to the mountain and flat again so at this particular point the driver will feel uncomfortable that is why we need to design a proper vertical alignment to ensure comfortability of the road user.